before I tell you what this challenge is going to be, because we're going to challenge you to do something, know you and your relationship. Man. And take a second to think about whether this is a good idea for you or Man. not. Take a step back and evaluate your situation and see if this is a good idea. Y'all know when you, you order like a mattress or something online and it comes in a box that's this big, you're like, how the hell is a mattress in this box? And then you realize it's in a vacuum seal pack and you cut the pack and it goes and the mattress expands and you realize that you can't put that thing back in that box anymore before you do this exercise know how big the mattress of your relationship is and how small the box of your conversation is and whether or not your relationship can handle that i don't know if that made sense to you but it made damn good sense to me welcome back to another episode of the sit down talk my name is Kier, and i'm no amy and we welcome you clap it up for you for being up in this joint today you showed up and showing up is a fourth of the battle. If you are new here, it means you've never seen our chocolatey faces before. We welcome you, subscribe, make sure you hit the notification button, look at all our old videos just to catch you up and know what we about and how we about what we about. But if you are a group of people that we refer to as the repeat offenders, repeat offenders been showing up on yeah, Instagram, yeah, man. Sure, Y'all sure. been out there. Hey, bring that thing in, bring it in. Mm. You smell good? What's that, a new body wash? No, Amy don't like that one at all. She don't like that one. <laughs> I just wish behind the scenes, y'all don't see like the switch up and like, he'll be like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. and then he just like turn it on. I'm like, wait, I, I'm yeah. not there yet. It's like how Jeanette Reyes do the anchor voice. Yo, like y'all just built for this. I'm a regular, regular, regular person over here just trying to get my energy like everybody else. Please. You're you're phenomenal. Oh, thanks. You're welcome, boo. As you were. Um, today we have probably my favorite sit down talk topic. It is his that, favorite in a, in a long time, and it's about social media for the most part. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, it's about how social media plays with the way that we think inside of our relationships. And we're also at the end of the sit down talk, we're going to exchange phones and we're going to go through each other's timeline just to see how different it is. I know for a lot of couples out there looking at your partner's phone is a, a no, no. Even the idea of yeah. this is crazy to some people. So hopefully this starts some conversations that need to be had. Mm -hmm. And opens up some grace for some folks to really build on their relationship and making it strong as it could be. So Noemi and I were talking as we so often do. And one of the things we were talking about is echo chambers. I walked in one time and I asked her because, you know, the relationship, we try to make it a, as safe of a space as possible. I say, hey, babe. Do you get all these booty pages on your social media? And her eyes open wide. Like That's my, not how that happened. My brother, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you, you mean? You didn't ask me that. <laughs> I didn't ask you in that way, nah. But that was like the 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 overarching question because why you got all these booties on your timeline? Why so many? I saw so much That's ass on crazy. your timeline, bro. Like that that was a lot. Like it was on it was on TikTok. I didn't see that much. I didn't see it for real on like Instagram, but definitely on TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. And remember you you tried to do like the social media cleanse thing where you tried to follow a whole bunch of like like non stereotypically men whatever just to see if it'll change the booty Still just kept was getting up. cheeks crazy in my timeline yeah. and it's such a wild thing to talk about out loud because as soon as you say that the first thing people say is uh that the algorithm knows what you like that's because yeah. you watch too many booty pages but that's not true for me <laughs> i don't be watching the booty pages but my timeline is full of them and i asked no way man she like dog i don't have any of yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't realize that there was so much ass on social media. Like, I really didn't realize that all of my content is, like, mom stuff, mompreneur stuff. I mean, it's really just mom stuff. That's yeah. all I get. So it, <laughs> and fashion. It orients you that way. Do you watch a lot of fashion content? No, I'm not a fashion girly. I definitely will say that I, that I listen to, like, or at least I engage with mom content. Yeah. Like, not, like, serious stuff, but, like, the, the funny videos about, like, kids doing stupid shit, like stuff like that mm -hmm. but like it's beauty everywhere and it's like i don't go on social media to look at like makeup or to get makeup tips like i'm just i don't look at social media for like clothes and outfit inspiration so i don't know why it shows up so prevalently on my social media but the mom stuff definitely makes sense so that raises an interesting question to me is it that we're being fed content that the computer system the algorithms think that we like or is it stereotyping us because 
your content probably points toward you being a mom. Yep. I, the only content I really in like the content I enjoy most on social media is like animals, cars, like stereotypically uh, manly stuff. And I but want then, like booty pages fall under that category. I too? think so, and I think that's why it feeds them. Yeah, to me. yeah. So yeah, yeah. and that kind of made us think about echo chambers, and if why don't you break down what an echo chamber is? So an echo chamber, in essence, is a space that just repeats and throws back at you the things that you already think, feel, and believe. Mm-hmm. Now that's a wonderful thing because who doesn't want to see the things that they like, have their sensibilities and their likes reflected mm-hmm. back at them? But the problem with the echo chamber chamber is that growth only happens when you're exposed to ideas that aren't your own that challenge your long-standing beliefs that's how you grow that's the key word challenge Mm -hmm. i was just about to say that i didn't realize you were gonna uh, say the whole definition yeah yeah like that's the key like you don't have anything that challenges how you already think you don't have anything that challenges like the reality that you see so i think a lot of times when people when people kind of stay in these social media specific echo chambers they don't realize that there are other perspectives to like a problem so like let's say the parenting content Mm -hmm. um one of the biggest things that that prompted this conversation was you know we were looking at the way that you know like the funny mom content where it's like the trope of the worthless husband that doesn't really do anything yeah we talk about that here a lot yeah but like i don't see a lot of that content Mm. So I remember like when we would talk about the way that we might be portrayed online or like moms and dads may be portrayed online, that was a disconnect because I feel like you came from a place like social media really be playing with fathers. And like, while I agree with you, I just didn't see that. I thought, I thought we were in a different side of the fight, not realizing that like that type of content isn't content that I necessarily engage with because that's not my reality. Yeah. You know, and I don't think that that's the reality of a lot of my friends. So like I said, that was my, you know, social media echo chamber because I didn't see that that was a problem. The funny thing is you never really know what, what your friend's worldview is. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because it's a shame thing. Like, we got to be honest. If we're in a time where one of the ways that we get people to act right is through shame and social ridicule, whether it gets the job done, whether it's to the point of something that needs to happen, like making sure that there's gender equity or making sure that there's racial equity, like there is shame on the other side of it, that's the mechanism that makes people change their behavior. If you do a thing, if you say a word in the 1900s that ain't cool now, the reason you don't say it now because there's shame and there is negative reinforcement. Like okay. there's negative reinforcement. That's how humans learn, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. Mm. So with the echo chamber thing, it works two ways because I was bringing these things, I was presenting these things to her that are all down my timeline. I talk about it here a lot, like the, the mom content, like, oh, all men and husbands are useless. Why not do that voice? That's because it is. <laughs> and, and and not to undermine that, because there are so many men in relationships that do not pull their weight. Those women have the right to be frustrated and the right to talk about that. But I mean, like, it is overwhelming. And then when you read the comments, it's just, I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. And then there'll be one person, that's not all of us. What happens to that person when they say that? They get smoked. And it's the same thing with men content, all that red pill content as well. Sure. I also think that that's so interesting because remember, I don't remember the exact post, but there was a post that Kira and I were looking at and the comments that were pulling up on his page and the comments that were pulling up on my page for the same post were different. different. So that's why when you're like, all these women agree, I don't see that. And those aren't the comments that pull and not and that is not to negate that the situation is happening. It's just that I'm sure if I look at all of the comments and, and decide to go through all of them, I'll have a more like holistic view of what the comments say. But you know how like Instagram just pulls up the most relevant comments yeah. for like a very popular post? Yeah. I just thought that was the strangest thing. I think it is very strange. With that, I also recognize that my mind was falling into this trap that perhaps yours falls into. And I want you to tell me in the comments below if you feel like this is within like your brain's wheelhouse where I see that content on my page a lot. And then I believe that that's representative of how all people in the world think, feel, and believe. Mm -hmm. So then for all I know, this could just be like 3,000 of a couple hundred billion people who feel this way. And it's a, it's a small, but very vocal minority. Mm -hmm. So one thing we want to talk about today is just sifting through the different social media parts 
And how it plays in our relationship, mm-hmm. I've noticed that it plays into other people's relationships. Why are you liking this page? Why are you liking this content? Why are you sending me this content? Because people are oh, saying, really? yeah, a dude has sent his girl something like one of those, like a woman's job is to be in the kitchen and take care of her man. Like you need Who to think more it? like this. Oh, oh you haven't seen those yet? But this is what I will, I haven't, but people are starting to make comments in our, like our post about the sit down talk coming back, talking about the mistake misogynistic podcast and i hear that all the time yeah. but baby i wouldn't even know how you to don't find even know them. they exist that's crazy that's insane to me man if you, if you know of one you can like dm me you don't have to like publicly like comment it down below but i want to hear what these men are talking about it's not just men there are about two or three women that are becoming very popular in that space so as well i will say that i've seen a couple of those like social media like how to get your man to pay all the bills and make you a stay at home oh, mom like you know what i mean like i just remember like seeing I'm, i haven't seen a lot so i can't say that there are a lot of them out there but I just remember being shocked. Like I thought it was a joke. And then I looked at it and it's like, oh, it, it's not. No judgment. It was just shocking. That's all. Nah, yeah, no judge. Y'all know how we are. It's it's no I mean, judgment. I'm, I'm pretty much a stay-at-home mom, depending on who's telling my story. So like I get it. <laughs> but it was just like, oh, so we just out there, out there with it. Okay, cool. I guess, you know. Moving on. It's hard to be non judgmental. <laughs> it's okay if it's hard it's for okay. you to be yeah. non judgmental. Yeah. Humans judge. That's how you know the difference between a kitty cat and yep. a lion. If but it just looks scary, it might yeah. be. And recognize when you're being. It's okay to be judgmental as long as you recognize it and you don't let it like control your next move. You know what yeah. I mean? You don't let it control the way you see people in their totality. Got it. I think that's a I yes, think that's a good look. That's a bar. So let's talk about how it affected our relationship and then we can go into how it could affect other people, like other ways that it could Did it affect, affect our relationship? Early it, on. I think it affects it now, not in like a huge, hugely negative way or anything, but I think it's more of like when we sit here, we discuss like what we want to talk about on social media, mm. like topics for the sit down talk, you know, concepts for like our social media posts. Like I am feeling like a tinge of not resentment, but it's just like you wanting to really showcase like active fathers. And I just remember that shift. And I'm like, where does that come from? Everybody knows you're an active father. Like dads are dadding better now than ever. You know what I mean? Like, I just remember not understanding why you felt the need to really like push that until I started looking at your feed and you started telling me about these like dad bashing kind of posts and stuff. Like, like it was just never something that I'm like, I wouldn't think for that to be something that we would push so hard on. Yeah. You know? So I wouldn't say like it affected our relationship, but it did make me think like, what messages are you being fed on social media? Because like, it just felt when we would have conversations, it just felt like you felt so strongly about it. You know, I don't think that was singularly social media though. It's also the kind of reinforcement of the negative stereotypes. And I, can I keep it a buck? Yeah. There's a part of me that kind of resents and I shared this with you before, but I never shared this with y'all. Yeah. I didn't want to say the word resent. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Cause it's true. There's a part of me that resents how popular I am for being a good father. Mm. It feels, uh, minimizing of a lot of men who are amazing fathers. It feels tokenish sometimes. Like, look at this healthy man. Like there's no healthy men. He, he's the only one that exists. Like, look at him. He's right here. How do we fix men and get them like you? And I'm like, oh, yeah. no, I hate that. that's nasty. Mm. I understand why. Mm. I understand why, but I don't like it. I also don't like when men approach me, like, how do I get my, my woman to, and it's something manipulative and they don't own the part where they're taking ownership of a person, like a possession. And they're kind of trying to curate a future for them, not considering what she thinks is an individual beyond the relationship. Yeah, it's taking yeah, it. man. Taking it there. But, All right, we're going there. Yeah, we're going there. I hate to do the gender thing, but men and women do such nasty shit to each other on the internet, and both sides are so tribal and so stuck that they're like, no, I'm, I'm not giving any weight. Everything you do is wrong. Everything I do is virtuous and fine. And it's like, no, no. There's middle ground that it needs to be discussion around and discussion about. So just imagine like him and I are having this conversation. So he's coming from that place and I'm coming from a place where it's like, uh, we support women. You know what I mean? My husband is everything. We're a team. We're a partner. So I'm like, damn, like you really mad? Like, what am I not seeing? (laughs) And it's not even like an an invalidating, like that's not true, but it's just like, I mean, you spitting facts, but like we over here in the sunshine and rainbows and 
shit. Like, what's going on? Remember, I was you were just watching something about the color purple, and I was watching Danielle. I can't remember her last name, mm-hmm. but she plays Oprah's character from the original movie. And I was watching a story, and she crying, and Oprah crying. I'm like, damn, it must feel good to be a woman and have like that black community, woman. And especially a black yeah. woman have that community empowerment. You walk into a room, okay, sis, okay, shoes, okay, dress, mm-hmm. orange. Like it's an entire <laughs> culture. <laughs> Of support and Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I knew about the Yo, orange. Listen, I'm out here. We look good, orange. Go ahead. And I feel like on our side, when I look at men's content, or when I'm in the community of men, it isn't all negative. When I look at men's content, it's a lot of like get it out the mud. There's a lot of individualistic thinking, mm-hmm. and it's it's not as much community. I can we men and women are culturalized different, like in terms of community. Women build community for safety from men. Men don't need community for safety. Mm-hmm. We need community for other things mm-hmm. that we're now discovering we need community for. What would you say that is? The thing I notice about men with community is men need to hear other men say that this is my experience so they don't feel alone or stupid in the way that they feel. There are so many men that- Like for validation. Yeah, they invalidate their own feelings and the world around them does a great job of invalidating their feelings too, but they invalidate their own feelings before they even get to think about it. Cause mm-hmm. I shouldn't even think that that's stupid. That's weak. Why am I jealous? And you feel so bad and so guilty and so stupid and weak for being jealous that you don't explore the why, where it comes from. How do I minimize it? How do I fix it? Cause you're too busy thinking that jealousy is a bad thing or it's a feminine trait or it's, it's beneath or beyond you that you don't acknowledge the truth that's in front of you. Listen, <laughs> a man's mind can be a prison with, the way that we're culturalized here. That makes me so sad. It does. It's and a it's sad reality. I don't know it. I just, yes, we're straying, but I, I feel like in this particular case, it's necessary. Go off, sis. I, it makes me like sad, legit, legit sad. Like my heart kind of broke a little bit just hearing what you were saying, because, you know, this isn't the first time that you talked about how like good it is to be like a black woman specifically and what that support looks like. Like look at District Motherhood, look at the community that I've built just from the other like mom bloggers and vloggers and social media influencers. Like most of them I ain't never meet before. But like friends. But like I feel like if I were to pull up in that city, I could. You know what I mean? Like I I feel a genuine connection to women, like because we're all seeking that connection. And like I don't even have to seek validation because the validation validation is part of the it's the in the package yeah, yeah. it's package. like it it comes free <laughs> with the package and this is like a vulnerable moment for me too like i don't know that i've ever really sat down and considered what that would feel like for a man given the way that black men specifically are socialized given the way that black men specifically are invalidated in their emotions and like what you said right now like they don't even give themselves a chance to feel it because i'm not supposed to feel it yeah. Like they don't even sit and be like, well, why am I feeling that? Or where could it come from? Or maybe even like, maybe I'm not the only one feeling this way. I've never been in a situation as a black woman where I felt like I was the only one feeling that way. I know I got somebody to relate to me. I know I can find somebody that I can talk to. And it's just like, dang, like that's something that I'm realizing that I take for granted yeah. as a woman, as a black woman, because I have that. I, I've never felt like I didn't have that. And I don't know what it feels like to not have that. Well, yeah, and I think it's incumbent on men to build these spaces. It's, it's not women's job to do it. Oh, of course. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. incumbent on men of to build course. these spaces. Of but I it still make me sad. I think that there's progress in the ability to acknowledge that that's a thing. Because I think that's been a thing with the fight yeah. between us. Yeah, <laughs> the fight. The, <laughs> the war. Fight. The fight. The no, divergence of the sensibilities. Fight, but the misunderstanding between Ooh. black men and black women. I think misunderstanding is being too nice. I would say fight. I'm not trying to okay. change your mind. That's no, just that's just my characterization of what's going on. It is a fight, on. but it don't have to be a fight. Yes, it and does. That's... Absolutely, it has to be a fight. Why? Because no, I, I hear you idealistically. <laughs> it does. It does Y'all not have to know, be a fight. You're I'm right. Like a supreme optimist, and it's just very hard for me to see the sad realities of things. And yeah. that's where he comes in. <laughs> no, Amy also has the. I don't want to say esteem privilege, but it's the only thing I can think of. The esteem privilege of having a world that started off pretty small and that she's gradually building out. Like, you're a very nice person, but if you're not her friend, she probably not going to hang out with you. The people that you hang out with, like, I feel like if you do hang out, if they can actually pull you out (laughs) from chilling by yourself. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we love us some us time. Yeah, man. But it's... And by us, I mean me time. <laughs> I'm just... What I mean is you're not, you're not beat for friends. Like, I'm not. You're not just going to pick somebody up and become instant besties. Your threshold is a lot deeper, you mm-hmm. know, between the time I meet you and the time I consider you a friend. We have strayed way too far off. Let's, yes. get, let's, get, let's get this joint back <laughs> on the road. But that does kind of speak to echo chambers, though, because your friend groups and the people you choose to hang around are a version of an echo chamber. But yeah. with social media, it's spanned out through millions and millions mm-hmm. of people. So and, it's even more validation of your man. ideas because it's not just your friends agree agreeing with you it's everybody on social media and it feels good to be agreed with it, it feels does. good to be right that is one essential thing to being human it feels good to be agreed with it and to feel like you're correct do you feel like i know you mentioned this you know a couple minutes earlier when we were talking about how like these social media echo chambers i mean just social echo chambers in general affected our relationship i kind of talked about the whole like dad bashing thing and I feel like you mentioned something about maybe in the past because I really want to talk about how not only it affects like our viewpoints and like our morals and values in our relationship but also like the actual relationship yeah I mean back in the day you definitely put me on like hey you I know Ooh, that you like I this got, picture I, got, mm-hmm. uh, I know mm-hmm. what you about to go to oh lord Jesus do we want to be vulnerable today <sighs> Wait, are we talking about Voldemort? That's such a wild name. Oh uh, my god. It's from Harry Potter. I don't watch it. I'm not a Harry Potter guy. Voldemort in our relationship is she who shall not be named. Honestly, I don't even remember the girl name anymore. I be struggling sometimes when I'm trying to Yo, think. Of... I, you couldn't pay me to oh, say I remember her, name her name right now. Don't remind me. I won't, but I remember. <laughs> it's just what's funny is we can laugh about this now. You but... set the scene because I'm going to sound petty if I do. Mm. Where do I start? There's a dude somewhere watching this like, wait a minute, yeah. him too? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we can yeah. laugh about it. Yes, now. me really too. Can. Man. Well, when I tell you, let me just say, it affected us for so many years. It is not that serious of a situation it's not. for it to have affected me in the way that it did. <laughs> but, oh my God, this is the first time that we're talking about it. <laughs> Vulnerability. So look, so... There, there was this woman I was talking to before I met No Amy. And long story short, when she and I were talking, like about to get in a relationship, me and this young woman, I took a picture with her and I posted it onto my Instagram. I posted it. And at the time she was like, hey, yo, you're not posting me. Mm-hmm. Which in retrospect- He had a rule about not posting. You're right. You know? You're, but you're looking back, you were right. And it does look mad shady. So we went to an event and we took a picture and I posted a picture with her and I put it on my Instagram. Posted it. Posted it. And I didn't think nothing of it, no matter how crazy that sounds. But she was like, yo, we were like legit. Like we go together, bro. Yeah. We weren't official. Yeah, but, but it was, was like as official it could be before you became official. It was just a matter of time. That. It was the sentence without the punctuation. Yep. And I ain't had no answer. The reason I wasn't posting her at the time is because... When you're dating somebody, I don't know if women is the same way, but with a dude, when you're dating somebody and you're dating a lot of somebody's and then it's a period when you start taking your person seriously and then you only seeing your person, that gap is not going to make sense to a lot of the people who were seeing you <laughs> when you was out in the streets. So if I post her, it's like, bing, oh, who that? Mm-hmm. Boom, oh, this is why you couldn't answer the phone. Mm. Oh, this is why I haven't heard from you. And then there will be an attempt to sabotage this thing that I think is going really well. Her expectation was that I share her on social media like I shared the other girl, which makes sense at mm-hmm. the time. They Keep don't know why I fought you for that, man. Exactly what you just said. You said, bling, who that? So in my head, when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's why you don't want to post me. Oh, that's why. That makes sense. You had made, and that I'm not going to go into detail, you had made a post about her like right around the time that we met. No expectation of whatever. So that was like a year prior insinuating the caption was something funny, but it came across as this is somebody you really want to be with. So to see her repost it, to me, it was just like, oh, oh she reposted the joint? No, to see you post oh, her again. Oh, see her repost it on my See what I mean? Yeah. That was the only other person that you had posted again. It was just like, oh, that's the reason why me and him are not serious because it looked like it was serious before and now you posted her again. Yeah. And then remember, you told me nothing ever happened with y'all, and now it did. And I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. I felt like I was being played and lied to. Yeah. You know what I mean? But for you, it was just like, it's social media. It's not that deep. For me, it's social media is everything. <laughs> yeah, man. Looking back, that that looks so suspect. I mm-hmm. wouldn't have believed me either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed that shit either. 
That's but how, I, but I that's how say, it went down. I promise. I will but say all I the events, it. all the events that happened afterwards, prove that that relationship actually wasn't that serious. Yeah. But like it looked that but way. It looked it that way. That way. It if you, that yeah, way. it did. Yeah. It did. Yeah. And I, I didn't know at the time how to conscientiously not make it look mm-hmm, that way. Mm-hmm. The pre work, but we say all that to say that these expectations were built like social media infiltrated our relationship we allowed it to but it's a dominant voice in our culture and if that could do that for us it could do that for a lot of different people in a way well people who may not have the communicative resources we have to be able to talk through that thing and come out on the other side with more Mm -hmm. than just hurt feelings and anger toward each other how do you think we got there though i think we got to know each other yeah. I think if you don't know me and you're yeah. just basing me off a generalization yep. of dudes, yep. probably a generalization that's a mix of what you've experienced, what you've talked to your friends about, and what you see on social media, and yep. I'm somewhere within that triangulation, I think that makes sense. But once you know me, you know if you know I ain't beat for nobody. He ain't beat for no, nobody. It is never ever, that serious. Ever. He don't ever, give a damn. Ever. For somebody who's a social media influencer, this man don't give a damn about social media. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's something fun. Like, it's just so funny it's to me. It's a thing me. to do, man. Yeah, it's a thing to do that you've turned into a career, which is the wildest thing. But it's like, Kier was just so, like, not non-serious in a bad way. Wee. But just like he was just having a good time and it wasn't that deep. You know what Young I mean? Young man in your in your yeah. mid twenties vibing, he man. Vibing. Vibing. But and yeah, there's nothing wrong got, with that. I got to know you. I got to know you. And that was the hardest thing because it's like the evidence says that you a dog. But like you're not, and he never ain't nobody ever come to me as a woman. We've been together for like ten years. I am easy to find. His face is everywhere. And it's just like yeah. Everything that you said was true. Like, I also, I wasn't nasty no, to nobody out here. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, do say that all the time. That's why you got to Yeah, but, ask, but I'm telling the you truth. Have a gr- that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I know you're telling the truth. But it's like a man, when you ask a man, like, do you have a girlfriend? No. The follow-up question always has to be, is there anybody out there that think you their boyfriend? Oh, Like, that's dang. what I mean. Like, Let me write that one down. I, <laughs> I've never dated a dude before. I don't no, know about dating, none of this. Dating a dude is hard, man. That's I, that's it's why a, I stop. it's a mental f- the entire time. I, oh, damn. <laughs> that's why I stop commenting when you be like, dudes be like, no, they don't. And I, yeah. mean, I was like, I have never dated a dude. Echo what chamber. the hell do I know? Social media echo chamber part two. This argument it did affect our relationship because <laughs> I'll be like, dudes say. And he'll be like, you're being judgmental and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, like you've never dated a man. <laughs> like no. you don't, you don't know these struggles. So I think sometimes you would look at me like, ain't no way it really happened like that. Like men don't listen. But you know what know. I love? The inverse. You'd be like, yeah. I, years ago, you'd be like, women, because women don't be doing such and such. And I just look at you and the more you move through the world. Oh my God, I was wrong. Like, I was babe. so wrong. Like, I know, come on, come on, I know. I know it's cool. I ain't even gonna say I told you so. Ladies, people, we gotta tighten up. People, people want people, dog. Like forever people, and people forever. Are people. They want people. Okay, so, <laughs> so the next part of this, this, the portion of this podcast blog, wherever, you, wherever you're listening or watching from, vlogcast, vlogcast. Um, so Kira and I, I'm laughing because. <laughs> are you laughing? Because I'm just thinking about like the arguments that this could potentially start. But like, hear me out before I tell you what this challenge is gonna be, because we're gonna challenge you to do something. Know you and your relationship, man. And take a second to think about whether this is a good idea for you or man. not. Because what I don't want is y'all come to me being like, I did what y'all said and it started an argument. <laughs> Take a step back and evaluate your situation and see if this is a good idea. Can I give them an example of that? We didn't even tell them what the challenge was yet. Go I, ahead, go can ahead. Can I go, get go this ahead. off? Y'all know when you like you order like a mattress or something online and it comes in a box that's this big, and you're like, how the hell is a mattress in this box? And then you realize it's in a vacuum seal pack and you cut the pack and it goes and the mattress expands and you realize that you can't put that thing back in that box anymore. Before you do this exercise, know how big the mattress of your relationship is and how small the box of your conversation is and whether or not your relationship can handle that. I don't know if that made sense to you, but it made damn good sense to me. No, it made great sense. I'm just holding my breath because I'm like, people are still not going to listen to us, but hey, let's just move on. That's that's within your power, fam, bam. Okay, so we did. <laughs> that's, that's on you. 
So Karen and I did a social media like mix up challenge where we gave each other our phones and we allowed each other to like scroll through our timelines just to kind of see like an overview of <laughs> of what we saw. What we noticed. What we noticed. Yeah, it's a lot of difference. It's man. completely different. It's I, like completely yeah. different. I encourage you to, if you have a younger friend or family member Ooh. or even an older friend or family mm -hmm. member, take their phone. Just ask. Can I see your timeline? Do the younger one. It's more fun. Oh, the young timelines be crazy. <laughs> be wild. That's how I knew I was old. I'm like, why is he dressed like that? Like, oh, okay. I yeah. guess fashion changed on me. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize. Let's do one at a time so we can focus. Let's do yours and then do mine. Okay. Yeah? Okay. You cool with that? Here, you scroll. So that way you can stop one of the things that are interesting. <sighs> All right. So I'm about to scroll No Amy's timeline. Should I scroll your For You page? Oh, I've never done that before. You don't do this? No. I don't think oh, this you're is- Oh, going to see all the pimple popping videos. Then. Yo, why there's so many pimple- No judgment. <laughs> you didn't even see anything Gr yet. Yeah, I did. There's somebody pulling a a-, a what the f what is that, son? <laughs> Yo, it's eyebrow. Hold on, hold on. It's sorry. like microblading. <laughs> nah, let me let me. That's an eyebrow transplant. Yeah, like eyebrow hair, like filling in hairs for your eyebrow. Does that hurt? I don't know. I've never even seen that before in my life. Oh my gosh, it's pouring out of me. Is that it? That's her amniotic fluid pouring out like that. This is oh not. God, this is not her. Stomach is. This is not her first baby, man. She look like. <laughs> That's it. Mm. Oh, you begin the fish video. Anything like cooking. Wait a me. minute. No. Okay. So I feel like everybody's timeline is these things. This okay. is just the general for you page. Just go to my timeline. The people that I follow. How do I do that? So we got some Taylor Swift on Buzzfeed. Shout out to Taylor and Jarius Love them. Good family content. Looks like some black women empowerment content. Yep. Victoria Monet. Yes. Winning she her Grammy. Yes. She Let's is. go. Coco Jones. Look back, though. That dress banger. Look, look, black girl, happy for black yes. girl. Look, that's I know that's good. right, sis. Yep. Yeah, that dress like that. She looks so good. Yeah. She looks so happy. Oh, for her. good for her, man. Tabitha Brown and Drew Barrymore. Everything, Tab. All day, every day. You know, mm. people be stuffing every damn salmon with everything. <laughs> you ever salmon? Stuff salmon? You know, it's, it's shrimp or salmon every time. <laughs> we going to clean the oceans. <laughs> Shout out to funny mama, Catrice Pedro. Yep. Motherhood See? is beating my ass. There you go. Pregnancy content. Got some Jesse Wu on more threads. Victoria more Victoria Monet. Monet. Black women celebrating. Fried chicken. No, fried those are fried. Wings. Those are fried turkey wings. Ooh. Yo, I like your timeline better than mine already. Tell Let's me. Do three more. Let's do three more. Some Young, young Miami. Miami. Kids Kate Resort. Stuff. Elsa mm -hmm. looking insanely moisturized. Shout out to the Daily Davisons. Oh, look at Nova. She was so little. Their kids got so big. Yeah. But family content. So we got a we got a nice little beat for what Noemi's timeline looks like. All right. So that's my joint. Yep. So now we're on Kier's page. Music content. Okay. Victoria Monet. I'm making Rose Lane. She does a lot of women empowerment stuff. Yeah, I was about to say self help type mm -hmm. of stuff. Summer Walker. Well, considering that the Grammys recently happened yeah, everybody's solo. content i'm is also like a huge everywhere. summer walker fan so that's probably why she popped up on my joint therapy stuff skin care news world sports. news sports sports oh that's hey tony tv i think oh. he's hilarious oh the, he's the he one that the school content yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think slim funny without even saying nothing what's this that is rich fresh he uh designs clothes oh okay self-care mm-hmm Affirmations. Oh, you got funny mama too. Mm -hmm. It's probably because we both follow her. Beats. Beats. La Russell. That's rap music. I love La Russell. Yeah, so I don't know. Yvonne. Yvonne. Shout out to Yvonne. Does age really matter when it comes to dating? Ooh, we just had a similar conversation last night. And I had, yeah, I talked to my best friend's younger cousin, who I've known since she was my youngest daughter's age, and she's 26 now, mm -hmm. and we were talking about dating. What did she say? She's really mature. <laughs> she She's just like, she don't like men her age, and I was like, don't go too old. That's what you said? Yeah. I Why? Was, because, man. Do you feel like that is in line with, like, what we were talking about last night? I'm not talking about specifics, but, like... The whole posting of like younger women. Oh, you see uh, what I mean? Yeah, I, like, I think it's, it's I think it's hand in hand, but I think just historically, how men have been oriented in that just that space, 
it lends itself to like the predatory grooming thing mm-hmm. very often, even though that's not always the yeah. story all the time. Yeah. That's going to be the predominant thing that people think about. Yeah. When I see like older men like reposting like people like Chloe Bailey and stuff, like much older men, I don't know, it just makes me uncomfortable. But like going back to what you said, it's because my mind automatically goes to the predatory type of whatever, even though that's not necessarily what it is but it does make me uncomfortable because then it's like well like if an older man were dating like a 21 year old i'm thinking about like my 21 year old cousins i'm like i just can't see it yeah i can't see it i think you're searching for a different thing if you're that age as a man searching for a woman that young I, i think it's it's not about the woman it's not about the person yeah I would imagine, but she was talking last night about someone who's like in their forties, like reposting like a Chloe Bailey or these younger women. And this is where our perspectives are very different. I think if that person was to sit in my session, it'd be a different thing. Mm-hmm. But she had a problem with it. She thought it was creepy. Yeah. I didn't think it was creepy. She's an adult woman. I don't understand that level of fascination with it, but like the way she looks, you don't see everybody walking down the street like that. So mm-hmm. there's some novelty there. I know what it is. I thought about it after when, when Kira didn't automatically uh, agree with me. I was <laughs> yeah, like, hmm, was like- let, me, let me think about why I'm feeling that way. And now I know why. It, that was a projection because I just remember being younger. I filled out later in life. Mm. Like, so I, you know what I mean? Just like having like much older men try to talk to me because like my body made me look older. I wasn't really looked at by guys like that. Like I was cute, but I wasn't that girl. You know what I mean? In high school and stuff. So like once the end of high school and college began, like that's when I started having boobs and, you know, curvier. And I felt that like attention from older men was really weird like I just I did not like it this is the oldest the most like age range age range as far as like who I dated I always dated like guys my three and a half years three and some change and that's not even that much three and a half years isn't that much but like I've never dated anybody more than like nine months older than me before like it was just something about that experience so like when I see that it's just like oh my god she must be so uncomfortable no I was uncomfortable like it's a me thing and then also when you think about Mm. aging when men age they become more distinguished they become more attractive when women age it's like you're like an old hat (laughs) are you saying that's like the perspective out there it's like a a younger woman will always be seen as beautiful an older man will always be seen as handsome when you think of like the peaks of expectations like culturally as far as like looks go that's usually what it is Like, younger 20s women and, like, older 40s men. Like, the salt and pepper and the distinguished. And he has has wisdom, you know? Like, think of, like, Idris Elba. Like, George Clooney. You know what I mean? It's always, like, You mean, like, two of the more handsome men to walk the planet? Yeah, but ain't nobody saying that, like, a woman in her her 50s is beautiful. The pinnacle of beauty when it comes to women. That's never the case. Yeah, rarely. Unless it's, like, Angela Bassett. Like, look at Marilyn Monroe came in, like, what year was it? Like, the 50s and the 60s? And change the whole game. I feel like you ain't really looking at my timeline that long. I feel like you couldn't stand it. Like, it was just so interesting to you. I feel like I looked through a lot. It just wasn't anything to sit and watch. Yeah, it's yeah, not interesting yeah, to it's you. Not interesting to me. I actually didn't see any booty pages. I think you did a good job at your social media class. Yo, as you know what? This whole thing is just like a toddler. And you try to show people your baby can talk and your baby can say 80 sentences. And at that very moment, they just sit there and look at you yep. like you're crazy. That happens every time. Well, that just happened to us for this <laughs> entire episode. I don't know. I, I looked at this and I feel like your timeline, it wasn't as different from mine as it usually is, but... I feel like more of your interests were on your timeline. Yeah. I I mean, I rarely see things that I'm not interested in. But I also do a really good job at like if I see something that I don't like I will tell them like don't show me this anymore I, I, I do that all the I time I do that now I don't do it as much I didn't do it as much in the past yeah but you know when we talk about echo chambers and seeing the things that are reflective that kind of changed my mind I think sometimes not only do we see things that are reflective of what we think feel and believe I think this thing tries to guess what we yeah. think feel and believe it tries to show us yep. I mean that's that's not a guess thing that's nothing that's a truism that's not yeah. novel Every, that's how al- algorithms that. work yeah. you know it's based on trends the problem is when it's right it's great when it's wrong 
it's it's absolutely horrible. But that is our perspective. Let us know below what's on your social media timeline. What do you see? What do you like? What do you not like? What have you historically been shown? Like, let's make this a conversation in the comments. But we got to go because we got stuff to do in real life. Make sure you hit the notification button so that you can know of all of our posts as soon as they post. Also, make sure you subscribe. I appreciate the watch, but we need you to subscribe yeah. so that we know you are presente. Yeah, man. It feels so good to be back on the sit down talk. We love y'all. We love this. Let's keep this party going. Uh, what was that? What? That sound? Those are bubbling. I think that was the humidifier. <laughs> or my stomach. Who could tell? Let's eat. Hey, y'all be well. We catch y'all next time. Deuces.